afternoon, everybody. First of all, I want to thank everybody who is in the room tonight for giving up your afternoon to be here with us. And I am really pleased to welcome you to the Women of Color at Penn, Networking the Dream, Breaking the Poverty Mindset in Business and Entrepreneurship. And this program is part of our annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Commemorative Symposium on Social Change. And I know everybody knows about the Women of Color, but in January is the one time that Women of Color marries MLK, and we have a special program during that time. Uh, we have had some dynamic programming this year, and this one will prove to be just as dynamic and strategically instrumental in the sharing of information to address one of Dr. King's triple evils, and that is of poverty and economic exploitation. Um, women, I know, uh, have been wielding creativity and entrepreneurship thinking in so many ways, and uh, they uh, is so many Black women right now that have this entrepreneurial sp spirit, and they are empowered to move in that spirit and start their own business. So in my mind, the seeds of entrepreneurship has been with us since the beginning, uh, but now couple this with our intellectual independence, and we have really started seeing some trailblazers in starting their own business. Uh, and women like Yolanda Washington, who is the chair of the 2022 Women of Color Executive Planning Committee, came to this position with a vision, and she had a vision and a desire to shine the light on Black entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship, because every woman that sits in that chair has, comes in with a vision. So I'm, I'm going to stop talking right now. Oh, but before I do, just a little housekeeping. Uh, everybody that is... Uh, uh, in the room will be placed on mute and you'll be placed on mute throughout the program. But if you have a burning question that you would like to have answered, put it in our chat. And during our question and answer period, uh, we will try to make sure we get to as many questions and have them answered as possible. So I am getting ready to turn the mic over to Desiree Caesar. And Desiree was the uh, 2020 Women of Color Executive Planning Committee Chair. And her vision at the time when she was a chair was uh, a leadership, women leadership. And from her leadership, the Leadership Academy was started. If you don't know about the Leadership Academy, you need to find out about it. But right now I'm turning it over to Desiree Caesar. Desiree? Hello, can everybody hear me? Excellent. Well, it is good to be here. Thank you for that nice introduction. I am thrilled and delighted to be um, here to introduce uh, three, these three um, lovely uh, panelists. Um, you all are in for a treat. The first person that I'm gonna introduce is um, someone who is near and dear to me, um, Dr. Leslie Becton. Dr. Becton earned her degree in psychology in 2001 and got her master's degree um, shortly thereafter in 2003. 2003. She has her EDD um, doctorate degree um, in counseling and psychology, and she gained that in 2012. Currently, Dr. Becton is the lead consultant, CEO, and founder of Mural Community Counseling Services, LLC. Um, this a special organization um, is where she helps focus uh, people who are going through traumas, behavior issues like ADHD, PSTD, um, any kind of trauma-based uh, care, um, mental health, um, something that's really near and dear to um, our community. She has served over almost 20 years um, in the behavior health and mental health and educational field. Um, she's done therapy, behavior specialist. She was a mobile therapist, educational, behavioral, and a health consultant. Um, I'm really proud of her. Um, and in 2020, she earned her certification as a tele mental health training um, provider. Um, she is also licensed in the state of PA. So Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Leslie Becton, and I'm going to ask all of our panelists if they would share a fun fact 
um, with us all this evening. Dr. Beck. Thank you, Ms. Caesar. It was um, amazing. That was a great introduction. And uh, just to add a fun fact, I have done five Broad Street runs and yeah. one Tough Mutter. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay. But y'all didn't know that. All right. Thank you. Desiree, we can't hear you. You're muted. <laughs> There we go. All right, sorry y'all, I'm muted. I'm unmuted now. Now on to our next panelist, Ms. Keisha Davis. Keisha Davis um, is an alumnus of Penn State School of Business um, where she majored in business economics. Um, after her um, undergraduate experience, she went on and got her certificate from our, the Wharton School of Business um, and she has an MBA from St. Joseph's University. She has over 20 years of business experience, sales, marketing, dealing with business transformation, IT. And in 2018, she became a business owner. She is a proud owner of her aunt's bakery, Denise's Delicacies, which a lot of us are very familiar with, a local um, homegrown bakery, um, which has been in our community in the Philadelphia area for over 30 years. Um, uh, what else did I say? She has had numerous responsibilities in a bakery, including being a baker. You can't own a bakery if you don't know how to bake, including being a baker, a decorator, a cashier, working behind the scenes, and now as co-owner. In addition to uh, being involved as a co-owner in the bakery, she also serves on the board of vice president of the Legacy of Love Foundation. She's also a member of the alumni chapter of the Delta Theta Sigma, Theta, Delta Sigma Theta sorority. Had to get that right. Sorry, y'all. I see y'all. <laughs> so I'd like to turn the mic over to Ms. Keisha Ooh. Davis, if you could share one. Oh, wait. And I have to also say, she's also an excellent DJ. <laughs> Here goes my fun fact. <laughs> Well, thank you for that wonderful uh, introduction, Desiree. I really appreciate that. So yes, that is my fun fact. I'm also a DJ. I've been a DJ for, I think, over 25 years now. Still something that I love to do. Um, very fun for me. Uh, I'll just say another fun fact. I want to do a Tough Mudder myself. So. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Keisha. And finally, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing another business owner, Ms. Moria Wynn. Is she here? Okay, I don't see her. Okay. She is the co-owner of Contour Body Studio, which is now a medical day spa. There's locations in Philadelphia and Armour. The studio specializes in non-invasive cellulite reduction, fat loss, and aesthetics. This studio, Contour Body Studio, is an award-winning business, winning a couple of awards, the Best of Philly, the Best of Metro Philly in 2021, um, and it has been featured in Essence Magazine. Currently, it is in the running for the Best of the Main Line for the Armore location. In 2021, Contour Body Studio has partnered with a physician who is now the medical director and they can now offer weight loss and invasive services such as Botox and other fillers. Contour Body Studios will be opening its third location in the spring of this year in Atlantic City and is in the process of becoming a franchise. That is huge. So without any further ado, I'd like to turn it over and introduce Ms. Moria Wynn. Thank you, Des, for that great introduction. Hello, everyone. And a fun fact about me, um, I recently finished nutrition school, so I'm now also a esthetician. Um, and my favorite color is purple. <laughs> so fun fact. Oh, awesome. That's really cool. My favorite color is purple too. Excellent. All right, so we're going to get this party started, y'all, because we got a lot to talk about, a lot to dive into. So I'm going to turn it over 
to Miss Yolanda Washington. Yolanda Washington, who is our 2022 uh, Chair of the Women of Color at Penn. Um, she is the brainchild behind, you know, the Women in Business series. Um, she's also one of my colleagues. We work together over in Penn Engineering. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Miss Yolanda Washington. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome. I'm so glad to have everyone with us, our panelists, everyone in attendance um, for this necessary and timely discussion that we're about to have. Um, as a background, um, there's a sermon that was delivered at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia on July 4th by MLK. And he said, um, you know, sometimes a class system can be as vicious and evil a system based as a system based on racial injustice. And some black folks don't wanna be bothered with certain other black folks and they try to separate themselves. And he emphasized that this is why we must join together in the war against poverty, why we must fight against segregation. For segregation is not only inconvenient, it's not only sociologically untenable, but, and it's not only politically and economically unsound, but my words added to his sermon is that segregation is bad for business. We need each other to come together to pursue life, liberty, and happiness together. So this is why I wanted to have this um, discussion on how as businesses, as uh, uh, women of color owned businesses, as minority owned businesses, we can come together, use our networks and our resources to grow um, in an already segregated um, landscape. Um, so I wanna introduce an interactive um, activity. I'm gonna share this link. It is a link to a Jamboard and it has Was I talking this whole time and muted? I'm sorry. Did you hear me? <laughs> okay. How much did we hear? Let's see. Okay. So um, I'm going to share this um, interactive activity with you. I just shared a link with everyone, and I'd like you to see if you can go onto that link. Um, and it's a Jamboard, an interactive Jamboard. I'm also going to share my screen. And um, I'd like I'd like you to uh, um, answer the prompt of define success in a few words and or paint a picture or describe what a black Wall Street would look like today. I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes or a few minutes um, to add to the to the jam board and I'll save it and um, it could be yours to, to view after that. But if you're able to access it, um, let me know um, what you think on the board. <laughs> Right, I'm about to share my screen. And I added, um, I had already added um, a Wakanda. Uh, I don't know if you know how to use the exam board. You can insert a photo. You can find a photo from Google and insert it. You can type. Here is the, um, the text box where you can type. You can insert a sticky note just that what comes to mind when you think of a Black Wall Street, how that would look today. Um, I have these um, Wakanda warrior women um, together with their hands together, because that's what I think of uh, related to this uh, event. And you can play with that while we're, success is when we all achieve success. Amen, Ashe, when we all achieve it. I love that. Success is completing personal goal, feeling accomplished, choice. I know that's right. That's that liberty, right? To choose uh, your destiny, if you will. I love it. Um, why can't I see that? Success is reaching your goals, being settled, happy, and reaching back to bring others up. I know that's right. Agreed. Agreed. I'm not muted, am I? Hi. <laughs> Success is, li is lifting others as we move. I love it. So, 
Um, oh, look at that. Look at that picture. I love it. Thank you for sharing your ideas. That's awesome. So as you as you play around with the Jamboard, hopefully you'll also um, pay attention to our panels and discussions. But thank you so much for um, for um, contributing to this board because we're going to I'm going to save this and maybe post it to our uh, women of color at Penn uh, social media pages so we can remember you know what, what we all agreed uh, that success looks like to us and and hold ourselves accountable to it. Um, become accountability partners. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go to my first question for our panelists. Um, if uh, we could spotlight our panelists. And so I'm going to ask the question and then I will um, uh, nod to the panelists to answer. Are you going to keep sharing the screen? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. Yep. Stop <laughs> Got you. Yeah, I'm gonna stop sharing. Thank you. There we go. Stop sharing. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Great. Great. All right. So my first question, um, while women owned businesses account for 40% of all businesses and black owned businesses is a fraction of that percentage, they tend to be small, both in employment and revenues. How do you think you could utilize your network to grow beyond these statistics? Um, Leslie? All right. Um, so in thinking about that question, um, I'm, I'm definitely a firm believer that social capital is just as important as our financial backing, our financial standing. So I'm a firm believer that our network and using our network and a lot of the panelists today, I know them personally. So using our network to kind of expand beyond where we are. Um, also using social media, which has been very instrumental in this day and age and kind of allowing our su support to use and, and capitalize and market our businesses as well. So um, using organic marketing, like I know Moria, I know Keisha, and to be able to share what's happening with my business and vice versa, what's happening with their business, which is equivalent to what you were saying around kind of sticking together and not segregating um, that we're all pretty much in this together and no one man is an island. So um, just kind of working with that mindset and model, I've been able to, I think that, you know, I would be able to kind of take my business to the next level by using my own organic um, market and then allowing my um, friends who support me and my network to kind of expand and, and refer my business as I would theirs. Wonderful, I'm gonna uh, pose that same question to Keisha. Yeah, um, I definitely think that um, leveraging social media and your organic market is how we get it done. Um, and I'm going to say, treat everyone well, wherever you go, right? So even when you're not representing your business and you're just representing you, whatever you do, just be polite and kind and do the right things. And um, I've actually had a, a business, a young business owner or open a shop down the street and she came and she asked me some questions and for advice. And that's what I said. I said, treat everyone well, and people will be inclined to want to rally for you and do for you um, how you have done for them. So that's what we do in our business. We try to treat our customers the best way we can. We don't always satisfy every customer, but going into every cake order or every order, hoping that they will be more than satisfied and that they'll go and they'll tell everyone about how great we treated them and how great the experience was. But it real, your business really is a reflection of you and your morals and your values and what you put into it. And then when people see you on the street, you have to be that same person, right? Um, that way they will want to support you when they see you and when they come into your business. And Maria, same question. Yeah, so um, I agree with everything that both ladies said, but um, one of the other ways, um, Black female entrepreneurs can um, expand, basically. Um, we have to 
first of all, we, we have a limited knowledge of capital because as black people in general, we just got a late start to becoming entrepreneurs and just the stock market and everything. So one of the things that, that um, we have to do is basically learn about all of the financial products and services that are out here that help small businesses, that help women of color. So you have to sit back kind of and, and expand your network, like network with people who, who do credit, network with people who do know about um, grants and things like that. So um, I agree with you, ladies, you do have to get on social media. You do have to network with people and all people who own all kinds of businesses, not just the same kind of business that you own or similar, because there's a wealth of, uh, there's a wealth of knowledge out here that we can all learn from each other from. Awesome. I'm getting um, my, in my notes, I put build a money team. <laughs> so if, if I'm not an expert and you're an expert, I'm building you and we will make this money together. That's awesome. Um, my second question um, is a, a, has several parts. First, are you part of a professional network? Uh, for example, do you attend meetups, local entrepreneur events and trainings? Um, and then my second part is who has been your mentor and how have you utilized them? Um, I'm going to kick that question to Keisha first. Um, okay. Well, to answer the first question, um, I would just say the African-American Chamber of Commerce, um, I'm not really as active as I used to be. Um, and then I'm also a member of Delta Sigma Theta, so that, that's helpful in networking. Um, but I don't attend as many meetups and as many meetings and, and things as, as I used to. I used to do it um, and not haven't done it for the bakery so much, but I've done it in the past, um, in my past careers, I should say, and it's been very helpful. Um, as far as mentors, so when we first bought the business, um, we looked for some people who could really help us in the city, for one, um, some people who are already doing it, um, but then also people who can, if we could spitball some ideas from a commerce perspective, um, they can give us, give us like the, the real skinny of what's going on in the city. Should we open another location here? So we actually have um, a, a confidant in Harold Epps. He, he used to be the former, uh, he, he is the former commerce director of the city of Philadelphia. And he was a family friend, but then he became more like a mentor. And he would really say, you know, you should probably look at this part of the city or think about, you know, um, this this product line. He would he would really get into our business. And so he was really a good outside mentor. But then my aunt Denise, she's the best mentor. I mean, she's here a couple of days a week. Um, she ran. I watched her run this business for the past 30 years. I used to be here myself. Um, over summers and, you know, when I was in school and whenever I just needed to, needed to make some money. Um, but she's always been um, a really good mentor because I, now I'm in her shoes. I can see it. I, I, you know, I've had all those other jobs as a cashier, but it's really something different when you are the, wearing the shoes of the one who makes all the decisions, spends all the money, and so she's the one who can kind of give me all that guidance without, you know, me kind of bumping my head and making some terrible mistakes. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Moria, uh, same uh, set of questions. Yeah, so um, my business, uh, my business partner and I, we're part of a lot of organizations. Um, and I just wanted to say, whatever industry you're in, there's always a, an association tied to it. So I'm, I own a spa, so there's a spa association. So always look for the industry that you're in and find the national association to join that. Um, you also want to join uh, Facebook groups. There are a ton of Facebook groups out here um, and they, they range from any and everything you can think of. So Facebook has really helped us um, build our business and expand our business because we're in a lot of groups where we can bounce ideas off, off of like-minded entrepreneurs like us. And it really does help. 
Um, you also want to find like the, you want to join the Chamber of Commerce. If you are in Pennsylvania, join the PA Chamber of Commerce. Um, it does help. And in it, whatever um, neighborhood your business is in, you want to join that neighborhood association as well, because that kind of just puts it out there that you're here in this neighborhood. You have a business in this neighborhood and that'll help you grow. Awesome. Is that Leslie? Dr. Beckton? Right. Yes. Um, similar to what Maria and Keisha were saying, um, in terms of being on organizations and, you know, associated with my business, definitely a part of um, several counseling associations and um, the Black Women's Association for Higher Education and several boards and social media projects. So definitely trying to stay relevant, trying to stay out there. And in terms of uh, mentorship, I think mentorship for me has been an ongoing thing. Um, similar to what the ladies were saying, it's like an ongoing process. It, it doesn't feel like it's just been necessary at um, the entry level part of my business. It's um, important for just the sustainability of my business because sometimes um, you know mentorship can come in the form of just another person who was a colleague maybe and they've kind of done something similar to what you're doing, or just a person who's not, like Maria said, who's not in your business at all, not in your field, but they have experience in business. And I think um, for me, uh, mentorship has been paramount initially when I first started the business, just uh, people giving words of encouragement and giving me that extra um, confidence and push to just get it done, to just do it, you know? and. Um, I think that was really important for me, but ongoing mentorship is uh, very much key to what I do in terms of um, if I'm not looking at it <clears throat> through the lens of mentorship, I might look at it through the lens of consultation, just meeting with someone else to um, give me another perspective has been paramount for my business. That's awesome. And um, I was speaking with, I believe it was Desiree earlier, uh, Desiree or uh, Colleen, and we were just saying like how um, thinking of mentors, sometimes we always think of like if someone uh, is older than us or has been in a business longer, but your mentor can also be a peer or a younger person because they might put you onto a new hustle or a new avenue of, uh, you know, like so this social media thing. So that may be a younger person who's more, uh, you know, well versed with it. That may put us on to uh, a new market. Um, so like thinking outside the box, even with uh, mentorship. So that was good. Thank you all. Um, and um, I want to ask, and anyone could, anyone could, any one of you um, could just chime in. But like, why is this uh, finding a mentor and utilizing utilizing your network? Why is that important to your success as a business? Um, I can start off. Um, in my business, in my field, in the beauty industry, it's very much so cutthroat. So I can't say that my business um, ever found a mentor per se. Um, but we have been able to, like some people who own spas in other cities, similar to ours, will reach out to us via social media and ask us questions that we have built relationships um, and where we share ideas, we share service ideas, and we just, we, we help each other basically for free without charging each other. And that's very important because a lot of people don't want to give up information. They want to hold it. They don't want you, to, they, they don't want to give it to you because they don't want you to outdo them. So finding someone that you can feel and they can feel you is so important. It, it really helps. It helps the growth of your business. It helps you if you have questions and just giving back to somebody else. So it's just, it's so important. It's very important. But um, I always, my business partner and I always say like, there's a million beauties, there's a million hair salons and barbershops in the city. It's okay. They all have their own separate demographic. We all can, we all can eat. It's enough out here for all of us. We don't have to be stingy. So finding the, the right circle, like even if you have to have like, a, I have like a power circle. I call it a power circle. I have a group of girls that we all um, 
we hold each other accountable um, and we bounce ideas off each other. We set goals together and we help each other reach those goals. So that's important. Did anybody else want to add? I'm sure, yes, uh, Yolanda. Go ahead, Keisha, I'll let you go. I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. I'll jump in there. Okay, um, so yes, I'm just piggybacking off a question that I saw in the chat. Uh, yes, for me, my business was a leap of faith. Um, it was something that I've always wanted to do, but uh, really just didn't know how I was going to get there. Like Moria said initially, you know, kind of being ignorant to some of the resources that are out there for business businesses, small businesses, or people of color, um, and just kind of hearing people talk about small businesses and having, you know, an ideology of, you know, what that could be or what that could entail. And um, for me, I just got so uncomfortable in my current, my not my current, in my previous um, environment working. Um, and I knew that I could do it, but I just had to, to make the move. And like Maury is talking about her power circle, my power circle was just like, you have to just go for it. And, um, you know, sometimes you're not gonna know every step and you're not gonna know exactly how everything is gonna work out, but you have to be confident in what your, what your abilities are and, you know, what you are able to do. And if I was gonna gamble, I was definitely going to bet on myself because I knew, you know, what I was capable of. And so that's how I started, one foot at a time, not knowing, the end, the end game, but I knew I would be a success. And so I just um, gave that a try and I did it. That was it. Go ahead, and, Keisha. Yeah, and I'll just say that um, it's good to have mentors because business is hard enough. Like, there's so many things that we deal with on a daily basis with your business to keep it successful, thriving, alive. So having folks who have done what you are doing or can give you insight can just help you save a lot of time, energy, stress, and reassure that you are on the right path or they can tell you, hey, yeah, that happened to me. And so it does, it, it feels like um, you are going in the right direction and you're not, you know, you're going to make mistakes, but it, it's still reassuring to know that you have someone um, that can either help you avoid some mistakes or say, listen, when that happened to me, I did this. And so um, that's all I was going to say about having mentors. It, it's, it's just helpful to have some folks in your corner to kind of be like your, your backup team or, you know, another set of ears or, or, or eyes for you. Awesome. So my next question is, uh, what has been your greatest challenge as a woman of color entrepreneur at this moment in growing your business? And how would you imagine using your network to overcome it? I'm going to kick that question off to Moria. Besides COVID, um, COVID has just changed our life so drastically. Um, Besides COVID, um, one of the biggest challenges that I think that we're facing right now is that we did take on an investor for growth, which is our medical director. He's also an investor in our business. We had to basically give him a percentage of our business. So that was a challenge. And then sitting um, at the table, a different table with people who have seven and eight figures now, um, is making sure our voice is heard, especially when you're sitting at a table and you're the only females at the table. Um, you have to make sure that you're heard and respected. Um, so that's one of the biggest challenges for us. Um, another, ch another challenge is um, I did talk about um, not knowing about all of the resources out here and I feel like when men start businesses, especially white men, they know about um, the access to capital. They don't, they don't always go into their own pockets to start their businesses. They get investors and, and, and loans and all kinds of things. And 
we don't know about that. So a lot of a lot of the things that was done for my business was self-funded. Um, so that kind of um, it puts a damper on your growth in the long run when you don't know everything that's out here that's available to even there's so many grants out here for women and so many loans and just so much out here that you don't even have to take a dime out of your pocket really to start your business. You just have to know where to look. So that's one of the things that we're continuously um, working on, learning about business credit, learning how to build business credit, learning what you need for business credit, learning how to properly have a business. And now our business has moved into on the main line so this is a brand new demographic for us. Um, and you just have to make sure your customer service is top notch. So there's just a lot of learning things that we're continuously learning. And um, yeah. So I'm gonna kick that uh, question to Leslie, Dr. Becker. Yes, I agree. Um, I think one of the, the hardest um, things was to just, get started in the first place. And I'm sorry, you got, can you repeat the question? Cause I know Maria actually uh, touched on a lot yes. of different things. In the, in right. Um, <laughs> right. So this is what has been your greatest challenge as a woman of color entrepreneur at this moment in growing your business. And how would you imagine using a network or each other to overcome it? Yeah. So um, I think the greatest challenge for me, and I, and I think I did explain, um, like for me, I was working as an executive at a, a, a mental health facility and I was walking away from, if I was to start this business, I was walking away from a six figure income. And the way I grew up, you know, people don't leave good jobs. And so uh, the reason why I put that in air quotes is because that the stigma of that was the hardest thing to overcome mentally for me. Um, trying to figure out that if I make this move, I need to make what I'm making or more. You know, I, I, I'm not, I can't afford to take any losses. You know, I have a, a life that I need to maintain. I have a family that I need to take care of. So that was the biggest hurdle. And once I was able to kind of process that through the, the help of mentors, through the help of colleagues and, and friends and family, you know, who were cheerleaders, and circumstances that kind of presented themselves, um, I think I was able to move forward. But I, I also agree with what the ladies were saying, to be so in the dark about the capital and the resources that are available, that really is a hindrance. And if you feel like you have all this information, you have all of this education, but you know we're not kind of, um, shooting at the same baskets here and um, wanting to kind of get that information so that we're on the same page as, as um, you know, white peers. Uh, and I feel like making myself in the know about that now being a business owner, I wish I had had that information sooner. Keisha? Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna say the biggest issue for us is really the pandemic. It, it really is how it's impacted our operations from staffing to supply chain to that. It, so it's not necessarily exclusive to being a woman of color, but um, it definitely is hard being a black business because it's a smaller business. It's a business we're in North Philly. So attracting talent, um, making sure that we can have enough revenue to offer competitive uh, wages. So um, we have been fortunate to still thrive um, during the pandemic, but it is tough. It, it's, it's very hard to, to juggle all the levels of operations, including financing, like including making sure that you have enough cash flow um, because prices are of, of your ingredients or prices of your um, materials are going sky high. Our business in particular is not necessarily, it's, it's not service oriented. I mean, there's customer service, but we have a finite um, number of ingredients that we use for all these different um, things that we offer. And so we use a certain 
um, number of suppliers. So we want to make sure that we can pay our bills and that we can get the right price. And so it, it's a lot to juggle um, because we offer products as opposed to services. So I'm, I'm going to say the, the employees and, and the supply chain, that's, that's the toughest for me. I guess that was like a trick question <laughs> in retrospect. Um, so um, my final question uh, is how do you, um, because we're talking about, um, and Moria touched on it, that like um, her industry is extremely competitive. So how do you redefine competition? Like who is your competitor? How can you make them an ally potentially? Um, and how can entrepreneurs, uh, specifically um, entrepreneurs of color and women, um, share resources, support each other, and provide feedback? Um, I think we already had touched on it in some of the discussions, but you know that that's not that doesn't necessarily come at a cost um, to each other. And I'm going to kick that first question to Dr. Beckton. Yes, um, I think um, we we did kind of touch on it, but just wanting to to elaborate a lot more. Uh, in the the line of work that I'm in, I do understand as a business that there are competitors, but because of the field that I'm in in mental health, like the need is so great and grand that it's not enough of it's not enough me as it is people who have a need, and so in terms of competition. Right now, in terms of the pandemic and how you know life is presenting in Philadelphia and the crisis that we're in with gun violence, um, it's just not enough. It's not enough help. So the competition is there, but we all have different specialties. We all have different experiences. Um, all different reasons why why people would seek out a counselor in, in my line of work, and um, for. For me in particular, a lot of my clientele, which is not segregated, but a lot of people are looking for Black counselors. So people seek me out specifically because of that. And then they start thinking about the specialty of it. So what are your specialties? Can you meet my needs? But that's one of their needs. And so in terms of competition, um, me and my network of counselors is a variety. We have to share. We have to stick together. We have to um, communicate because the caseloads are so full that people are like, I'm, I need another therapist. I need a network of therapists that I know so we can share, you know, the volume of need that exists. So for me, like this time is, is interesting in terms of um, my business, which is, is thriving um, because of the, the need. And so I think, um, for me, is enough work on the table, as Maria said, is enough for us all to be successful. And I don't think that we, we need to continue to operate in um, silos, that we must use each other as a network. And that is the only way that we're going to evolve and kind of, you know, um, help and grow and expand all of our businesses. If, you know, if everybody here works together and says you have this type of business, that type of business, my mind is that every one of our networks will get fed because we're all kind of promoting each other's businesses for growth. Wow, feeding the network so we all can eat, that's awesome. Um, Keisha? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna agree on that, that last point. Um, having a bakery, I come in contact with people who do all kinds of things like uh, maybe they're party planners or they plan events or they cater. Um, so we just try to um, provide the best products that we can, the best service that we can. And then for me personally, because uh, my aunt built this business 30 years ago and so many people in our community are connected to our business from their experiences. We don't just sell cakes, we sell celebrations, right? So everybody is coming in every day to celebrate something. And over 30 years, people in our community have been celebrating. So we we have some competitors. I mean, it's a bakery. So, you know, some folks might bake at home and maybe they'll get it from the supermarket. But for us, it's keeping that same spirit, that legacy alive of being connected to 
people's personal events in their lives. Um, as long as we make sure that we keep that um, first and foremost, when we're delivering the product, delivering the cakes, um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll continue to be successful. And then, like I said, people who have event spaces and things like that, we try to, you know, advertise for them or recommend, you know, people in our network to folks who come into our store if, if they're looking for those types of services. Maria? Um, as far as um, competition, um, in the beauty industry, there's a lot. Um, we have places popping up, especially in the past year, almost every day that do the same services that we do for a fraction of the cost. But one of the things that differentiates us from them is because first of all, customer service, you, you really, you already, we're already at a stigma with a black business that we don't have good customer service. So one of the things that my company does is we go above and beyond for our clients. So um, customer service is very important. Um, the other thing is, and my advice to any business is don't be afraid to charge what you're worth. Because we have a lot of clients that will come to us and say, well, such and such up the street is doing it for $60 cheaper. Well, then you need to go over there because you must not be our client. You're not our demographic because you wouldn't go into the Gucci store or the Prada store and argue the price at, at Saks or anywhere else. So why come into my business and argue a price? So you also have to... Um, don't be afraid to toot your own horn. So tell people about your accolades, tell them about your service, tell them about yourself. So don't ever be afraid to toot your own horn um, and let people know who you are and what you're worth and what your business is worth. So that's one of the things that has separated us from some of our competitors in the area and why we've been around for four years, going on five years now. I love that. Um, I'm taking notes as I'm um, listening and asking questions, so uh, don't mind me. Um, so I wanted to pose this to, um, before we open up for a Q&A, um, and I saw that um, Darren put that, if anybody does have a question, please um, um, put it in the chat and we'll, we'll see if we can ask those questions and have our panelists answer it. Um, panelists, can you put your websites in the chat, please? Um, if you're able to, but I wanted to um, pose this question to you panelists. Um, actually Desiree had asked this question in the chat and I like it so much that I think we could have this as like a closing question. So, uh, her question was, if there was one thing that you could tell your younger self about business, what would that be? I would say um, just go for it. Like what, what is the worst that can happen, right? Like, so say for instance, your circumstance or what your circumstances are right now. If you don't try this business, if you don't try this idea, you could always return back to the original version of whatever you're doing right now, right? So the worst that can happen is, you know, you just are back where you started. But if you don't try, it's like you never tried. And um, like I always tell my clients, you know, we want to think with the abundance mindset. If I'm going to touch something, the goal is for it to be a success. And I'm not thinking, you know, not being naive to the challenges of it, but I'm not thinking that I'm going to be a failure. I'm thinking that I'm going to do it well, like I would do any job that I was going to go and sign up to be, you know, an employee or whatever. So I take this business as serious as I have taken any other task in my life. I wake up for it um, earlier than I normally would wake up. I go to sleep later than I normally would go to sleep. And I treat it with the dedication that it deserves. And so I would just say, go out there and, and get started. And don't put your fears on the shelf as your younger self and just execute. You'll be surprised at you know, how things materialize for you if you believe in yourself. The next one could try Um, 
I would tell myself, don't be afraid to fail. Um, failure is just a learning experience. And one of the traits of millionaires is that, first of all, they they don't let fear stop them or hinder them. They actually, if they fail, they take that failure and flip it and learn from it and turn it into another business or another strategy. So you can't be afraid to fail. Failure is something that you just learn from and keep going. Um, another thing I would tell myself, my younger self, is to learn as much as possible. Um, watch other people learn from them. Learn from their mistakes. Learn from learn from their um, achievements. Just learn from people, uh, especially if we we know everything. Uh, learn from people. Keisha. Yeah, I was actually going to say what both of these ladies said. You know, be fearless and don't be afraid to. You know, if you go down the wrong path, <laughs> figure out what happened learn from it um, and keep going. Whenever you have a goal in mind, just focus on the goal. If that one plan didn't work, figure out the, how to make it work. Um, that's what I do all day, every day, is I know that I'm gonna have obstacles every day. And so it's just figuring out how to um, navigate those obstacles, what went wrong, how we're just gonna avoid that, hopefully uh, some stuff is unavoidable and you know or what we do to make it easier but just telling yourself don't give up things will be hard that's what you tell your, your younger self things will be hard um but just make sure that you can have the fortitude to keep moving sorry i was writing these these this is going to be my on my vision board don't give up i'm taking it away so i got go for it from dr beckton i have don't be afraid to fail from Moria and learn all you can. And then I have, don't give up from Keisha. If that's not full circle, I don't know what it is. <laughs> that's awesome. If that's, if that was what, if that was all I would take away from this, I already have enough. Thank you so much. Um, so much panelists. I hope that people um, have already gotten so much from these ladies, Dr. Becton, Moria, Keisha, who's also a DJ. <laughs> Sorry, Keisha. But that's awesome. I found that out um, uh, after reading her bio. And um, we're going to take it to our Q&A now. Um, but I, and, and Val had posed a question that I saw earlier that I think Dr. Becton, you had um, began to answer about like what, what got you started? You know, what made you kind of go for it? And I do want to pose that question to you all, uh, to the panel. Uh, what, you know, what motivated you to get started? How did you get started? I, I, can, I can start, it's, mine is really simple. My aunt retired and I just did not want the, the business's legacy to die with her retirement um all that that connection that the community has with this business i wanted to carry it forward so i felt like it was my responsibility to do so that was it um, for me uh, i've always had an entrepreneurial spirit spirit um, i've tried other businesses but i finally found my niche so um, I never wanted to just work at a nine to five. Um, I've always wanted to own my own business and I just went for it. Uh, Dr. Becca? Yeah, so um, similar to what everyone is saying, um, that was on my vision board uh, maybe about 20 years ago. I used to say, when I get older, <laughs> when I get older, I want to have my own private practice. And honestly, um, everything kind of start aligning in my life that pushed me to that point. Like Keisha said, it was, it, it's going to be hard. 
but what part of life is not hard anyway? So it's hard anyway. So the time is going to go by anyway. I might as well do what I want to do. And I, I want to do what I want to do. I want to be happy doing what I do. I want to wake up being thrilled to do what it is that I'm, I'm doing, even if it is hard. I still want to like it. I want to love it. I want to have a passion for it. And so I knew that in this chapter of my life, I wanted to feel that way. I didn't want to feel the way that I was feeling. So that was also kind of pushing me to start it myself and kind of go at it on my own. And I mean, honestly, it was the best decision I've ever made. One of the best decisions that I've ever made. And um, not saying that it's easy because it is not, but it's worth it. And it has been. That's awesome. Um, so um, there was another question earlier and it said, um, have you ever um, had any naysayers and how'd you deal with that? Does anyone want to answer that? I can. <laughs> My mom was the one who said, you quit your good job. So Dr. Dr. Beckton, that was right there with my mom. And she was kind of like, ah, oh, I don't know about that. You got a good job. I mean, just, if, just let it go. But um, I really couldn't. So even my mom, now my mom actually works at the bakery and she's one of my biggest cheerleaders now. But um, other members of my family, they know how hard running this business is. And so it was kind of like, they were just telling me, no, you, you probably don't want to jump into it. And if you tell me no, that makes me actually more motivated to, to go after it. So I was just like, all right, we'll see. <laughs> and so here we are almost three years later. So, yeah. Um, I think for me, the naysayers were family and friends, um, but you just show people better than you can tell them. So that's how you deal with that. And then even now, you can't please everybody when you're in the service industry. You always get customers that you just can't please. So people leave like negative reviews or co negative comments on your social media page. Um, you just have to basically, you either respond to it or you don't. But again, you just show people. You continuously show people and you stay you keep the same service that you've always had and try to excel in your service so you can show people. Yes, and I, I would piggyback off um, by saying, uh, fortunate for me, uh, my, my family and my friend group have been monumental in, 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 in support. I've gotten so much support and love and encouragement. Like the ladies are saying, the naysayers probably have come from just other walks of life, or maybe my old job, <laughs> maybe, you know, other walks of life. But um, at the end of the day, you know, would you really be doing anything excellent if you didn't have any naysayers? Are naysayers like sitting around, you know, talking to each other about what each other's not doing? No. So um, that's a testament to me that all is well. It's a testament to me that I'm doing great because it is going to be one or two or however many people as your business grows. And um, I try to remind myself that, you know, I want the people who want, want me. I want the people who want my service, right? And everything is not for everybody. And that's why, you know, that's when some of the competitors come in. You might be, like Maria said, best suited for someone who can meet your need. but um using the mentors and going back to the colleagues to kind of support you through those tough times because it will be some negative reviews you could have had a hundred amazing reviews but one review kind of brings you to your knees and you do need people to consult with to kind of pour back into you to remind you that you know keep on going you can't please all of the people all of the time that's great i was i was thinking of um, Dr. Beckton, you probably hear this in your practice, but that some of the naysayers, some of the, the big naysayers are also inside your head, um, internal. So you, you, like you all are brave 
and you went for it. You had a dream and you went for it. But some of us have these naysayers that we have to um, show ourselves even that we can do it by jumping out there. Um, so um, uh, I'm, you're preaching over here, preaching over here. I guess I have to get it started. Um, another question <clears throat> was, how do you make sure you're heard and respected, especially being um, women of color um, owning businesses? Um, I, I can start that one. Um, for me, just being a woman in like leadership positions, being in executive positions, and now, you know, I think all of that has helped me in my business today. But it's, you know, it's never what you say is how you say it. And always, you know, reminding yourself that you're deserving to be at any table that you're, you're at. You, you're there because you're supposed to be there. So like the naysayers, even in your own mind, you have to constantly remind yourself that, you know, I'm good enough. Yeah, you know, my, my service is quality. What I'm delivering is quality. And, you know, it really does start with you and you being a champion for your, your very own self. And so I think, most times you'll be surprised that you give a lot more people more power than you give yourself. And so you go into a, a room, a boardroom, like Moria was saying, and kind of being there with people, six, seven figures. In my mind, I've already accumulated six or seven figures, whether or not monetarily, that's what's showing up in my bank account. But I have to believe that before that can even materialize. And so when it's time for me to go into any environment, I am good enough. I'm worthy to be there. And I'm going to speak my truth no matter who's in the room. Yeah, the piggyback on that, if I am in one of those situations where I may not be um, most educated in whatever the subject matter is, if I'm in that room, I'm going to get myself educated. You're not going to catch me off guard with a tough question. Um, or too many tough questions because just like Dr. Beckton said, I'm in the room because I, I deserve to be there. So I want to do my homework. And when I speak, I'm, you're going to know that she knows what she's talking about. Um, as managing the business, you earn the respect too by being a good employer, by being a good manager, and by listening, by being a good proprietor um, for your customers whenever there's a customer service uh, issue and they ask for it, the manager, I'm the manager. I, I, I speak to the customers with respect. And so I get their respect back, right? So they're not as uh, fired up as maybe they were because something was wrong, but it's it all in how you treat people. I agree. Um like I said, when you go to the table and you're sitting with people that um, may have more money that or more experience than you at that time, you have to know your stuff. So when you come into that room and sit at that table, know, know what you're talking about um, and make sure that your voice is heard. Don't have confidence in yourself. Make sure they hear you and make sure people know that um, you know what you're doing. Um, again, don't be afraid to show people, um, should tell people about your business because you are your biggest advocate for your business. It starts with you first. Uh, for one of the things that we do for my business is um, we walk around, we wear like pins or hats that say our company logo on it. Um, so I see a lot of people who have businesses, they put a sticker of their business on their car um, you just have to represent yourself first. You're your biggest advocate and you always will be. So you have to make sure your voice is heard at all times and stay relevant. Stay relevant on social media. Social media is a, a free, well, they try to charge you now if you're a business, but it's a free, somewhat free platform to disperse information and advertise yourself and your business or your product on there. Utilize it. Utilize it. Amen. Um, so uh, someone had a, a couple of people had a technical uh, question or more detail about um, funding, which I guess is 
is may one be one of the earlier challenges like how how do you one thing is like you know how what are some funding sources that you may have used or how you found that, that funding and how do you um, know what you need to get started if you do want to start a business how can you calculate that so um when you start your business, I mean, Google is going to be your best friend. Um, you have to know this proper steps in starting a business because a lot of people out here have businesses, but they're not businesses to the government. And you always want to have everything on paper. You want to be legit, legit, 100%. So you have to learn the proper steps in starting a business. That's the first step, securing the EIN, um, going on Duns and Brad, uh, Brad Street and getting your DUNS number, which is basically the equivalent of Equifax and TransUnion, TransUnion, but it's for businesses. That's how you get trade lines and that's how you secure business loans. Um, registering your business with the state. So you wanna go ahead and, and start with that first, putting yourself on paper and documenting your business correctly. And then you can move into securing trade lines and um, looking up um, grants. If you look up grants for black women or grants for women in general, in general, or even there's so much money out here with COVID, there's a lot of money out here. You just have to take some time out and look for it and make sure that your business is accurate on paper because that is one of the most important things that they're gonna be looking for when they're giving you your money is that you have an EIN number, you have a business bank account, like your money cannot go into your personal bank account. You have to have those kind of things in order to start um, to get in funding for your business. The, the next thing I would add to is that you're very realistic with what it's going to cost to operate your business. Um, really doing the research of if it's a new business, doing the research on what could possibly go wrong or what you may need extra money for. Just being very realistic and not lowballing yourself when you're asking for funding. Um, because you can get a working capital loan and blow through it in a few months if you're not really sure of you know some of the pitfalls or some of the um, stumbling blocks or hurdles that you'll need to financially overcome in the first part of, you know, growing the business. And um, for me, my business is uh, younger than the, the ladies on uh, the panel. So for me, I'm, I'm educated as a therapist and I know nothing about business at all. One of my mentors told me that you're not just a therapist, now you're a business owner. So you have to, to start making investments and things that will kind of cultivate some knowledge around business. So um, one, to start my business, like Moria was saying, I kind of turned it over to professionals. I went through LegalZoom just to get all of the, the documents correct and um, you know, situated with the state and um, you know, getting, making sure you have a right accountant and you know, all of that stuff is set up right through the business and not kind of touching hands with your personal um, data. But for me, in terms of like marketing and kind of, I just wanted to do the business of therapy. And because my mentor kept reminding me, you can't just do the business of, you can't just be a therapist. You, you're trying to do employee work, you are the business. So I had to really do some mindset work around that. I uh, made an investment and I got a, a marketing team to support me and initially, like when you think about, you know, this marketing team and, and you know, making the initial investment to uh, get some support so you can learn how to navigate your business better and get, get clients and things like that. I didn't want to make the investment, but um, I made the investment. And honestly, it was one of the best investments that I made um, with my business because the return on investment was amazing. And what I learned, you know, that cannot be. Um, that cannot be undone. So um, all of that, and then actually kind of making investments. And then like Moria and Keisha was saying, trying to get capital to, to make those type of investments. I didn't know anything about that initially. So I paid for everything out of my pocket. And I started just seeing clients as soon as the business was set up. 
And that was great that I was able to bring in capital, you know, right away, but other people don't have that luxury, but I wish I did know going in about the, the, the financial aspects of um, the grants and all of that initially. Those were things I didn't start learning until like maybe a year into the process. Um, my final question from, from the chat was like, as a, a woman of color owned business, how do you um, create an, or maintain self-care? So one of the things that I learned later is that before you start your business or while you're in the early stages of starting your business, get your house in order. Meaning make if you have children, make sure you have a schedule for them or you have help for them. Um, make sure your house is clean, the area that you're gonna be working in, make sure you have a schedule, what time you're gonna have dinner ready. Um, just get your house in order first because starting a business is gonna consume most of your time. And when your house is in order, when you, you focus on that first, then you know that's, your house is fine. You'll have more time to focus um, into building your business. Because as females, that's one of the hindrances um, because we have children, we are the ones that take care of the home. Um, so that takes away from some of the time that you have to put into your business. So just start off getting your house in order getting that situated first, and then all else will fall into place. Well, I guess I'll go. Um, I'll just say that I, I make sure that I eat well, uh, sleep well, and I, I work out because I'm around sugar, cookies, cakes, and all things that I want to taste all day which is not good for my body. Um, so I try to balance it with veggies and um, things that I know are good for my body, but it's just with taking care of my body, but also taking care of my mind, knowing that accepting that things will be, um, will go wrong every day because that's the kind of business that we have. Um, you can plan as much as you can, but when you're relying on other people, sometimes you know you just have to deal with things as they are. But just learning how to prioritize yourself <laughs> and being able to take a, a minute, like I need a minute, and then being able to tackle whatever um, the challenges are that keeps you pretty sane still, I think, keeps me stay sane. Um, but that's it. Yes, yeah, so, um, for me, um, in, in the line of work that I'm in, I kind of listen and take on the energies of other people um, throughout my day. And uh, yes, it's very important to have my house in order uh, because I, I find that when, when things are not well there, I'm not able to function the way that I need to function. So that's really important and kind of taking the steps necessary to make sure that that's always the case and asking for help when I need help from my village um, to support me so that I can you know, stay focused on some of the tasks at hand. Um, as for me, I start my day off in the morning and prayer. Um, I try to do some guided meditations. Definitely working out is a, is a part of my um, schedule to just making sure that my mind is always on point and my body's on point. And um, I, I like to get massages. I like to patronize Moria and get some services done at her, her facilities. And um, I also like to make sure I'm getting good sleep. And when it's time to be off, I maintain my boundaries and I'm off, you know, and um, I'm true to myself about that. And uh, most importantly, I'm a therapist, but I go to therapy. And uh, most people go to therapy when they're in crisis. And I recommend therapy as a maintenance, as like something that somebody would do if, you know, they were kind of make like going to the gym. Um, for me, it's exercise of my mind. It's, it's just to make sure that I can unload in a space that's uh, safe and healthy for me um, as well. And so I'm a big advocate and proponent for, you know, seeing a therapist, you know, and it doesn't always have to be that your life is in crisis. It's, it's like it could be used as a way to not have anything be in crisis, you know, just as someone that you can 
kind of talk to that's not in your family, who, um, you know, is a safe space to give you another perspective on other ways to look at attacking your life. So all of the things, and I'm always open to um, other uh, information about how people engage in self-care. Yes, um, I don't know where I got this from, but I heard before, like, you are the asset. So you always have to protect the asset. Just like I think earlier you all had all mentioned at one point or another that you're, you are your own advertisement. Like you are representing yourself everywhere you go. And you're also the asset. So you have to protect that at all times. And uh, self-care is necessary. Thanks for that question, Colleen. Um, so we had, there was a question that came in and it said, what was one way that you rewarded yourself for a moment of success? Um, I take, I like to take vacations and not think about anything. So um, I've tried my best um, to just get away especially go somewhere where it's warm and sunny and a beach and the ocean, just to kind of relax and uh, decompress and detach from work and be with my family. So that's one of the ways I enjoy um, rewarding myself. Did all on that, everything Maria just said, everything. Yes, I totally agree. Um, definitely a fan of uh, the trips and um, look, always having something to look forward to. Um, but just also daily doing daily celebrations, doing daily like high fives, patting myself on the back, um, reminding myself what I'm grateful for. So, you know, the, the long term gains of having something to look forward to, like a vacation or, you know, a good night's sleep. <laughs> little things we take for granted, but um, just the daily reminders that, you know what, this might've been a rough day, but this is what I did well. And so always reminding myself of, you know, what I did well, circling back to that, at least uh, once a day, reminding myself of the gratitude. So um, I wanna thank, oh my God, this was so amazing. I have literally, uh, you probably can't see it, but it's like my notes, I have notes that I wrote down because like there's so many gems dropped today. Um, and I and I saved the chat because you ladies, you panelists are amazing. And um, we wanna, I definitely, um, could you post again um, how to get in touch with you um, in the chat? So people can follow you, reach out to you because um, yeah, counseling is important and we can and we can look you up. Um, I want to thank you for agreeing to be on the panel and just dropping so many jewels um, uh, today. Um, and if you'd like to provide, I'm going to ask um, to leave with you know a closing word from each of you on you know one one thing you'd like on the audience to, to take away from this panel. Um, before you do, I just wanna say um, that we, this Women of Color um, in Business uh, workshop, this is the second, and we're hoping to have a third along with a um, Women of Color in Business resource booklet in March. And um, we would love to have your businesses listed there as well as other businesses that, um, especially women who may be um, in the audience. Um, so we will look for that because we will be soliciting um, your business information to share in the luncheon booklet. Um, and in that booklet, we'll also provide some resources to grant funding and uh, sources and in the basics of what you may need if you're interested in starting a business or growing your business. And um, I just want to say my last word is that it definitely takes a village. Somebody mentioned a village, I think, Dr. Becton. It takes a village um, to even, you know, start and grow your business. And then it takes a village, a village to maintain that. And I think we need each other, especially being businesses of color, especially being women owned businesses of color. We need each other. We have to promote each other, lift each other up, help each other get started. And some of that is social capital, which is 
uh, not monetary. So if you have uh, last words, please share. Two things in closing is becoming an entrepreneur is 50% hard work 50, or hustle and 50% mindset. So I can give you all the knowledge, but if your mindset isn't right, you're not ready. So make sure your mindset is right. That's very important. Yeah, I would say um, definitely uh, mindset is the key and uh, focusing on betting on yourself, you know, like taking that chance. We only get one life, no do overs. So, you know, if you're going to execute, you know, do it without not saying do it without fear, because fear is going to be a part of it. Sometimes fear can can motivate you and drive and drive the situation. But just doing it. And, and not having to think about all of the steps at one time, but taking it step by step and, um, you know, asking for help if you need help, you know, relying on your, your network who uh, are people that are supporting you. And if it's not the people in your family or you don't have the friends, then you find a network, you know, of people, of strangers who kind of may be into the same thing that you're into and, you know, allow yourself to um, be rallied, rallied up around those folks. And so I would just say, um, go for it, ask for help if you need it. And definitely, um, you know, mental wellness is very important. And if you need supports or help, you know, please um, use, use your insurance if you have it. But if you need any support from me, I'll be putting my information in the chat. Thank you all. Um, as I said before, as you're prioritizing yourself, uh, in your own well-being, um, make sure you also look out for the people who are around you to help you be successful, whether it's that your customers, um, your employees, and I even take care of my suppliers. Um, treating people with respect, you will get the respect and people will want to um, cheer for you and, and support you. Okay. Wow, ladies, this, this is, this was awesome. Um, let me take my camera off. Uh, this was absolutely awesome. I, I, I'm ready to start my own business. I didn't even know I was, but I have to thank uh, Yolanda Washington uh, because she is a phenomenal young woman. She birthed this idea. This, this was her baby. This is what she wanted to put forth as her legacy for sitting in that, uh, in that chair, in that seat as chair of the Women of Color Executive Planning Committee. So, uh, Yolanda, I want to salute you and give you a, a round of applause and a hand for a job well done. Uh, continue to look for more programming for each of you ladies that was on this panel. You are so phenomenal. Uh, you just dropped some great gems and I know you fed a lot of, of, of souls and a lot of entrepreneurial spirits out there tonight. So just uh, pat yourself on the back for a job well done. Um, and yes, and, and Desiree, you know, Desiree was a chair of chairs when she was sitting on that because she birthed, uh, like I said, the Leadership Academy, which uh, I, I don't have time to talk about right now, but we've had some phenomenal chairs uh, right now and in the past. But if you're looking, this program was a part of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Commemorative Symposium. We started on the 17th of January with the day of service, and we usually close with Jasper King. But like somebody said, COVID has been around for a while and it looked like it's not going anywhere for, uh, for a little while. So we've had to postpone some of our programs, including our Jasper King, which will close us out April the 1st. So we do have another program tomorrow. We have another wonderful program on Monday. You can look for all of our program and I have it in the chat, uh, arc.upenn.edu under MLK of Women of Color. We hope to see you again. Don't let this be our last time. And uh, this program was being recorded or it is being recorded and live stream and so at some point probably next week we'll send out a link uh to this program and you can look at it again or you can share it with other people because this is too good to keep to ourselves because uh like all three of you said we don't have to be in competition with each other 
uh, it's so many people out here in our communities that uh, we can just share what we do. And, and, and it's so good for us ladies to be coming together. So I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you for being here and come back another time. Yolanda, did you want to say something to close us out? Thank you. Uh, that was great. I just want to one last time share the screen of our, um, what our um, I keep calling it Wakanda because I put my Wakanda there. But I don't, if you can see that screen, I just wanted to share what we all posted, um, that there was a defined success and or paint a picture of what a black Wall Street would look like today. So that's what I want to close with. Like we're, I, I feel like we're all on the same page and that is so encouraging that we need each other. These, these business owners who are already successful in what they're doing and are going to be more because you just gained uh 50 to 100 some odd more customers. Uh, someone, Diane, in the chat said <laughs> she wants to get a massage. Did she say she wants to get go to the spa, eat and cake, she eats her cookies, and <laughs> and have therapy? Oh, this is this whole <laughs> presentation is making her want to do that at the same time. And um, what she said in closing, what she said. So I will be seeing all of you ladies. Um, and hopefully um, more businesses will, will also be represented um, in this booklet. And we can all support each other, encourage each other, share with each other, um, and uplift each other because it truly takes a village and we need each other. I'm just so glad we're all on the same page. Thank you, everybody.